<sighs> More than all, have you ever just choked on your own spit? <clears throat> I've just inhaled something. <clears throat> yeah, it's not good. Hence my croaky voice. Right, Posty's been. Posty has been. Suzuki AN650 Bergman. <clears throat> Rear brake shoes. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> I'll try and die quietly. <clears throat> right. And this is turned up. Any of you guys know what that's for? Right, okay. Neither do I. No, actually, it's um, on the CVT housing, the big, the big housing, the big round housing. <clears throat> Excuse me, that bolt goes up in the bottom. And... I don't know if I've shown you the original one. It's got like, like a... The end's been dented and clattered. Um, if that happens, or if yours is like that, please order one of those and get it changed. Because apparently, uh, there's a, a fellow Bergman owner in the good old US of A. Good morning, sir, if you're watching. Um, they do say that he has said that if that bolt fails, um, it could lead to catastrophic engine failure so for the sake of a tenner or 13 bucks buy yourself one and get it changed it's simple you lay on your back you get your 14 mil spanner in there undo it take it out there's no fluid in there and you pop the bolt in and do it up that's it job done well, and when i go to do that job uh, in a bit you'll see the old one in comparison with the new one so don't risk it for the for the sake of it, just get it changed. Hockey dockey. So, we've got lots to do today and breakfast is served. So, I better crack on and stop inhaling juices and such stuff. <laughs> Hi, guys. Easy Shed Bergman. Right. Let's get this bolt swapped out. Got my 14 mil spanner. My ratchet spanner. There we go. I've just tested it with the multimeter with the engine running on the battery. 14.48 volts. So, that's perfect, isn't it? Right, let's shut that boot down. Let's turn her off. Oh no, don't tell me I've got to take that flipping side cover off. I hope not. <clears throat> ah, flipping hook. Where is it? Oh crap, I've got to take the flipping. There's the oil, what's that on? Bugger all. <laughs> right. Where is it? Where is it? No, I've got to take this cover off. But I'm not going to do it now tonight, sod it. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that another night. Okie dokie. Oh well, that's a bit of a false alarm, isn't it? Never mind. Let's uh, let's start her up again. Just let it warm up so the battery's fine for the morning. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, I will change that bolt out, but I need to take that foot shield off. Ah, uh, so that's going to have to wait in the meantime. All right, groovy. Have I done anything else to the Bergman really? Well, no, actually I haven't. I've um, been working on the Honda Vision. Uh, and H80 1990 uh, vintage. So that's all coming along well. I have a huge shipment of parts coming. Uh, when I say a huge shipment of parts, I mean... A huge shipment of parts. Let me just show you what I've got for the old boy. <coughs> eh. Come on, don't be weird. Right, we have the rear disc. Voss. So I can't wait to get that on there. A couple of funnels, is that all right? Don't need that, do we? Right, as you know, there are the pads to go with the disc. Here is the headstock uh, bearings and seal. So that's to do. Slinky guide. What is that? Bearing kit. This is for the front wheel. There is a little slinky. I'm not quite sure uh, what that's supposed to be doing, but it's one of them. <laughs> And you get a free sticker, so that makes all the difference. 
Right, I've got a couple of slidey pins for the back caliper to slide in and out. What else have we got? Brake piston. Stainless steel, no less. Here we go, that's for the rear caliper. Uh, like I said, there are two pistons in there, but one's got a cross in it, and you wind that in for the handbrake, uh, etc. So that's that with a little pot of grease. And another sticker. We've got two stickers now. Spark plug. Right, another piston kit. All right, that is the rear wheel bearing kit and seals and another slinky and another sticker. So that's all that. Look at this stuff already. What else have we got in the box of delights? Oh, we better have another spark plug, I suppose, don't we? Uh, what else have we got in here? Oil seal. Now I can only guess that that's for the front wheel. Nah. Rear wheel. Yes, rear wheel oil seal. Okie dokie, and La Piste de la Resistance. I'm kind of really liking this. This is a TRK. It's a lovely magnetic stick kit there. And you have all the gumph to do the front cylinders, front uh, calipers. And you've got all the little bag of seals and knickknacks and rubber boots and gaiters and things in there. All stainless steel, I might add. So that's jolly good. So as you can see, we've got a fair spread of bits to be getting on with in the very near future. Unfortunately, the winter's setting in. I might get it uh, to the workshop at some point and just take everything off of it and bullet it. I've got a couple of oh, some headlamp bulbs to go in. Step aside. Thank you. Yes, I've got H7s, H3s. There are some H4s in there. They're the super bright uh, uh, night buster type ones, so that's good. And uh, yeah, thank you, Zeus. So I'm going to crack on at some point and uh, keep watching. All right, cool. Right, T E C. Winston, or quality control to you guys. All right. He's listening. He's listening, isn't he? He's bloody listening. He always does. Right, today, Honda Ber uh, Suzuki Bergman. What do I keep saying Honda Bergman for? I don't know. Honda, you should have made this bike. But there we go. <laughs> Suzuki Bergman. I'm going to change this little bolt. goes into the CRV uh, housing right underneath. Just unbolt the old one. No oils. Plug a new one in. Da -da -da, and I'll show you the difference from them too. Uh, there are many things to address in this. I've been riding this now a couple of weeks to work and back, and I've noticed a few little niggles. One of them being the cruise control. Your bikes don't have cruise control, do they? Apart from the, you can get the little clicky on, clicky off things, and you can get those little plasticky things that you put over the handlebars, and you, uh, and you just sort of rest your wrist on it, and it stays out. You have to use your fingers to grip it and all that. My bike has cruise control. Let me let, let me explain. Right, here is my bike, here is my throttle, I accelerate, and it stays at wherever you put it. <laughs> now I've been, <laughs> I've been riding this for a couple of weeks like that, thinking, who would have left it like that? Who caused that problem? Well, there is a bit of a giveaway here, because the Suzuki, I've, I've been through all the paperwork, as I say, and I found out that the Suzuki factory install heated grips uh, failed and it failed in such a way that the battery tray kept draining and the bike had a new battery put on uh, so that was that and that failed again uh, the alternate was okay it was putting out your, your usual uh, voltage 14.4 plus uh, but it kept draining the battery so Suzuki who couldn't be wrong of course um, decided that okay we'll take we'll take uh, well actually I think the chap that owned it took it away from uh, from Suzuki, no offence Suzuki, and they um, bought some Oxford heater grips and they did a DIY, which basically means they, they that was up there on a, on a, on a tie wrap, wasn't it, on the first video type stuff. But anyway, I've, I've loosened the screws, there's the two little screws over there, Phillips screw, or JIS screws, and uh, I've actually been giving it a little bit of lube, so I've 
that is even worse. I've, I've lubed it already, but it's still sticking. But anyway, when I pulled this out of there, you can see the whiteness. It was bone dry. I mean, proper bone dry. Guys, when you're doing anything like this to a moving part, uh, unless it's like brake pads and discs and tyres and stuff, lube it, please. A little bit of copper slip on bolts, a little bit of three-in-one oil or general sort of all-purpose lubricant, you know, this, that and the other for various parts of the bike. But certainly for grips, pop a bit of grease on, on the metal, on the handlebars, and get your finger in there, wipe a bit around the inside of the tube, and then slide it on. <laughs> that isn't good. That is shite, to be fair. So before I go any further, I'm going to uh, remove that with taking off minimal stuff, and I'll explain that as well. To get this off properly, you really need to take the cover off, uh, loosen off the two cables, because you've got, you've got flow and return there, you've got pull and push on the cables to open the throttles and put them back down again. Uh, so you've got that, you really need to loosen it that end, so you've got free pay this end, so you can sort of get along those pliers in there and just sort of undo that, pull that cable up and pull the nipple out on the, on the other side, do the same the other side, and that's that. But I'm not going to get involved in all that gubbins at the moment. What I'm going to do is I am going to grab hold of that cable there with my long nose pliers. I'm going to go, come back with the return as far as I can, that should be loose, that cable, technically, so I should be able to do it without taking off the cowling, unplugging all the wiring for the loom, for all this kind of stuff, the brake switch. Don't want to get involved in any of that, so I'm going to do that now. And uh, Shall I put you on the stand and let you see? Do you want to watch? Do you want to watch me do some stuff? Hmm? Okay. Well, I'll get the tripod out, set you up, and you can sit and watch. Right. Let's crack on. Right. Like I say, I'll wind that one back down there so it creates slack. And I should be able to just pop that out there, like so. And there we have that one. That's the return. And I should be able to do the same. Let's increase the gap on that. Is that more or less? Yeah, that's better. All right, oot the way, lad. Oot the way. There's the throttle. So I can grab hold of that. Do that and that, and then that allows that lot to fall away, which reveals this. Oh my goodness. What the hell is that? Can you see that? It looks to me suspiciously like glue. Now, who in their right mind, or wrong mind, would put glue on there? That is, that is glue. Look. You put glue on the side that doesn't twist, that's fine, but you do not put glue on this end. Well, I need to, I need to give that a bit of a bit of a hand, five-finger shuffle, don't I, really? Oh, I'll clean it as fast as I like, Mother. <laughs> right. You'll get used to me. Don't worry if you're new to my channel. I am a little bit on the weird side. I find weird's good. That's super glue. That was super glue. That's where all the whiteness comes from. You know when you use super glue, you get that like white, hazy, powdery effect. It's all over the bars. So someone's tried to glue that grip on. Never mind, I see. Never mind. Right. Now I really need to get something down in there, don't I? Well, luckily, I should be able to. Yeah, look. Look, there's even more super glue in the tube. So if I smack that in there and give it a bit of a screw and a twist and a screw and a twist and force force it in the hole, look at all the crap coming out. Look, see that? Still coming out. Still coming out. Well, once more for luck. I don't reckon I've gotten all that out of there. I thought I could see, see a piece in there. Let's just give it a bit of... Get in there. Oh, baby. Brother Harry White. Mark and Lard. 
Oh, Mark and Lard, if, if you're watching this, Mark, come back onto the radio, radio with Lardy boy. We miss you dearly. You are fantastic, Dorsey. Oh, it's horrible. I'm going to have to get something non-metallic to scrape that. Just a minute, chaps. I'll be back, Asulis. Oh. I have a set of these things. These things are basically for taking, sort of jimmying out plastic trim on cars, car fascias, which is pretty good for this car fascia, isn't it, really? Right, let's give this a scrape, then. I can't believe... Look at that coming off. Somebody has put super glue on the twist throttle. Oh, my days. It been super glued. That throttle had been super glued to the bar. Oh dear! I, I do you know some. I do feel sorry for some people because monetary wise, they're forced to do their own DIY. But unfortunately, they don't spend any time doing any homework on on what actually to do. That is. Crazy. Right, let's give it a daub of grease. Let's get it on there. Don't be shy. Don't be shy with it. Oh, suit you, sir. Oh, that's nice and slippery. Oh, madam. Oh, at your age. At our age. <laughs> yes, I'm going slightly mad. Okay, that's that done. Now, the fun part. Get your finger in there. Give it a good old, oh, good old finger blasting. If you're not sure of finger blasting, I've patented it. It's on my, my other videos. Finger blasting, I'll tell you, is a way forward. Okay, I'm giving that a good reaming out. So that's properly lubed. Okay. You you can put too much on, guys, and it, it will ooze out the end, like, like it does. But just have to have a rag ready. That's it, just have a rag ready. Okay, so here we go. How was that? That was like that. Oh, oh do you know what? I reckon that's a good one, don't you? It's a win. That's an awooga moment. Only I can't reach the switch from here. Okay. Right, let's get the cables back on. <clears throat> Quickly. I'm going to get a bit of grease in there as well. This is that, This was put on bone dry. I mean, literally bone dry. Nothing's been added or subtracted. Oh, take me flipping trousers are hanging off. Right, y'all, let's get... Let's get the throttle cable in first. Just because. I love you. There's the throttle. Pop it in the slot. Put the cable in, and that's that. And then the return. I might even be able to just put that in there, like so, and just jimmy that up there. Yeah. Oh bloody, oh bloody, life goes on. Whoa. La 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 life goes on Desmond said to Molly girl I like your face Something or other something like that Okie dokie that's that now isn't that Isn't that a lot simpler than faff arsing around Okay let's just put that back on there just for argument's sake Okay now what's happening It only flipping works <laughs> I'm not overly happy with this flipping heated grip cable up there, but I, then again, I don't want this bulky part here to be round here, which would cover that cable up nicely and it'd be hidden away. But if that bulky part is round here, if you need to pull the brake on, that will hit there, I think. I think, therefore, I am. Oh, wow, I see what they've done. Ah, they, they've read the instructions wrong, haven't they, guys? Uh, the, heat, the, the heated grip itself, the rubber part, sits on a tube, on a sleeve, which then sits between the rubber and the metal handlebars, and that's 
the part that pivots. They have super glued the handlebar rubber to the sleeve and I'm guessing they just dunked it in a bowl of super glue and then put it on the handlebar and that the excess is you know built up and oozed out and gone down the inner side of the shell. I can't yeah I can it, 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 they've put on was a muppet <laughs> oh boy oh isn't that good but I've got no cruise control now what am I gonna do Right guys, let me just take you out your cradle. Shitting. Well that's a that's a win, isn't it? I'm gonna look into trying to lose that. See if I can turn this rubber part, which is glued to this sleeve, on the sleeve, just slide it round so that is under there. Because the brakes will that hit that? Do you know what? I'm not I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. I'm, I'm happy with that. It's not really in my face. Because I've hidden the one on the other side, I, I thought I'd replicate it on this side. Right, what's the next thing I need to do? You know I've got that bag of stuff, and I'm going to change this bolt later. One other thing I've noticed whilst riding is the crashing from the front end. Now, the bike's 11 years old. It's done 26,000 miles, which is a lot of kilometres. Uh, work it out. Okay. And when you're just going along, I'm in the UK, guys, okay? I'm, in, I'm out in the countryside, so any road going anywhere near a town, city, A road, B road, or motorway is pothole filled. It's got cow shit all over it. You know, there's grooves, there's furrows, there's, there's loose grit and gravel and all kinds of nonsense that wants to throw you off, off the bike. And the front suspension... Any lump, bump or cranny, and it crashes, properly crashes, and it's sort of shaking the front of the bike. And, and, and it's kind of wandering. It's not steering freely, I don't think. I reckon we're just in time with those headstock bearings to, be, to replace those. That should get rid of any notchiness, which would make the front feel 95% better on its own. Just like that. Just like that. Huh? Are you listening? Are you taking this all in, buddy? I think he just farted, actually. Naughty boy. Gets it from his mother. Probably. Right, so yeah, I want to sort... I want to find out what's going on with that front end. When the weather gets better, I we're in autumn now, coming on to winter, so next year, in the spring, summer, sort of May, June time, the front end of this bike is coming off. It's all going. Literally, I've got lots of wiring I want to do in there. I've got stereo system, I've got speakers, I've got voltmeter going in. All kinds of nasty uh, goody, goody, goodies to go in there. Modifications and stuff. I, I have changed the headlamp bulbs for the white light ones and they are awesome. But what I'm going to be doing is literally getting all this Tupperware off. Everything, front wheel off, out, discs, calipers, get them off, get them taken apart, get the sills put in, the wheel bearings put in. And more importantly, get these forks out and empty the oil out. And I guarantee you that oil in those forks will look just like the oil that came out of that gearbox at the back there. That differential. It's going to be shitty green with a, with a hinge of snot. Uh, bubbles. It's just going to be water. It's, it's going to be all kinds of crap. And I just know it because the way the suspension feel, you can feel it. It's horrible. I'll have to put up with it during the winter because I really can't be asked. I've got too much on, to be fair. So that it's going, it's fine, but it's that, sh that bo it's a bone shaker. I've seen guys ride these, for, you know, go, go on test rides with these bikes. You know, some from new, and some of you guys do comment and say, "Yeah, do you know, it's a bit crashy," and and I get that. I totally get that. So there you go. But mechanically, it's been neglected. I think. Uh, the reason I say that is because look at the oil, okay, uh, the battery, the rear caliper seized on, um, you know, all these little things are proper 100% serious maintenance issues that should should not even happen. If you're looking after your bike, that shouldn't happen. End of story. No, no argument against that. Anyway, let me waffling on. I'm going to go and get the brew, put those two screws in, sort it out, get the cloth on there, wipe, wipe all the excess grease off, get the end bar on there. Do you know what? 
I'm going to ditch these and get some little tiny caps that go in there, like I had on my Himalayan, a tiny little alloy black thing. These weigh an absolute ton. That is like, have you ever played boule, French boule, with the big, big chrome balls? And you throw them into the sand. That weighs more than one of those balls, I kid you not. That is... I'm going to weigh that on my scales later. That is... Oh, I don't know. This, that's got to be getting on for a kilo. It's got to be. I will weigh that and I'll put a photograph on of what the weight of that is. Now, they go on the bar ends, obviously, and the purpose of those is to stop any vibration coming up through the suspension steering onto the handlebars. Well, they freaking don't work on this one, do they? They bolt in to that rubber, that rubber piece there. See the rubber with the thread inside it? Well, that rubber, kind of, with the, the weight on the end, it, it's supposed to absorb... All that vibration is doing absolutely nothing of the sort at the moment. So, two kilos on the end of your handlebar waving around. Yeah. Yeah. I want to save weight. That reminds me, I need to go and eat some lettuce. All right, I'm going. Okay, catch you later. Chatty bye. Mighty O, E.T. Suzuki Bergman. I said Suzuki. <laughs> Get off me back. Uh, we are going to replace this bolt and you'll see why in a sec because it is quite a, a important part of the crv uh drive so if this fails apparently so you guys have said on there uh it could be catastrophic engine failure so pick her up let's prep on all we need to do is remove this left hand side um skirt if you like for want of a better word just literally pull up your, your rubber mats, <clears throat> like so. Pull them up. You've got these little rubber bungs. They're quite forgiving, so don't be, don't be too mamby pamby about it. You've got a Phillips screw there, and on the front you've got a Phillips screw there. That's those two. And finally, you've got one just in there. So you un undoes that one. Out you come, me little sausage. Okay, that's that. Then you have to pull up these little clips here. One, two, and three. And I do believe there's one under there somewhere. So let's, all I use a tiny little flat blade screwdriver. Literally get in there, hook it up, and now it comes. Put all your parts over there so you don't kneel and squash them. Yeah, easy as pie, isn't it? One, two, where's the third one? There it is. Okay, let's do that. That's that one. And let me have a look underneath. Yeah, there he is by the side stand. Oh, there it is. Pop that out of there like so. And we now are ready, literally. Oh, there's a, there's a screw under there too. See that? Remove that one. That's under the passenger footy peggy bit. So I literally just gingerly. <coughs> I can't do it with one hand, it's a can. Just do that, I just gently, gently do what I do, and, and there you go, off the bottom of that stand there. So you see it, I'm on the main stand obviously, so you can take it off the bottom of there. That is that. Look at the chuffing state of that already. Hockley Dockley, a 14 mil Espanero. Right, where are we? Uh, where are we? Do you know what? Oh, I've took off the wrong chuff inside, haven't I? <laughs> you stupid sausage. Just check that all level while we're here, look. That's nicely in the middle. That's cool. Right, well, I'm just going to undo the other side now. What a flicking right, so bag. let's uh, take two on this one. The right-hand uh, skirt panel. Let's get that off. Start to finish. Let's see how long it takes. Get the stopwatch is going. Go. That's out of the way. Let's get these little tiddly clips out. One. Okay. Two. Let's get them over there, like so. Third one is there. Okay. Oops. I've left a piece in. That's not too bad. Phillips screwdriver, and there, 
Hi ho, fiddly dee. That's one. I've already removed the one underneath there, so don't worry about that. And the last one is that one there. No, it's not. I've got the one around the front I'm by the rad. So that's that. And in there, by the radiator. Oh, crikey, you done that up. Must have been me. That wasn't going to fall off, was it, boys? Right, that's that. Just gently, gently, gently pull it out of there. Is there another peg under there? No, there's not. Gently, 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 gently. There we go. How long did that take? Two minutes? I don't know. Right, here we go. Bolt. 14 mil spun arrow. Get on back. There is the CBT housing. And there, my friends, is that little naughty bolt. So let's remove that. Get that on there like so. Yeah. You might notice I've smothered this all in grease. Because when I took this panel off initially, it had a load of that alloy white fur. This part here is actually foam off the inside of there. Can you see where it's melted up there in the middle? So I've literally greased that up so that can't happen anymore. Let's get this bolt out and let me show you what I mean. Okay then, don't come out then. You'll have no oil coming out of there, which is lovely. La, 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 la. Okay, do not have your bike running whilst you do this, because you can kiss it goodbye. Right, let's have an examination. Right, boys. Here's our new one. And there is the old original. You see how that's beaten? Okay, if that shears, you are in deep doo-doo. Okay. Now, the part number, I think I showed on an earlier video of this, is different. It's something, it's blah, 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 G00. That's that. And the blah, 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 G10, the G10, is the new one. Okay. This is, um, that is now obsolete. It is this one. I guess... It's harder metal, I'm guessing. I don't know. What does that say on the bottom of there? That's got a six and a dot at the bottom, and that's got a six and a dot at the bottom. I don't know. That seems to be more of a goldy sort of hue. Yes, I know it's been inside the engine. Well, I don't know. Anyway, that supersedes that. If that fails, you're in the crap. So there we go. There are no washers on it or anything like that. Nothing complicated. It's as simple as that. Wipe that new one in. Why did I think it was on the left hand side? I don't know. And whilst you're here, spend 21 quid on a genuine Suzuki CVT air filter. And I'll show you where that is in a second. I should have used a socket, shouldn't I? Maybe a little windy gun. Come on, in you go. Hi ho, fiddly dee. Oh, you don't want to do it like that. You want to do it like this. Nee. Okay, so now I can ride with the confidence that I know that that pin isn't going to shear. Okay, moving to the left slightly. In hither is a big round filter. One of you guys have already put on the inter on Tinterweb that you need to uh, replace it. I've just blown mine through. <laughs> Will you piss off, fly? Basically, this duct here um, sucks in air. Okay, there's a big rubber sort of pipe behind there which goes down and into the top of there. Okay, let's have a look. <clears throat> Can you see it? <clears throat> there it is there. Now, uh, to get this off, you need to undo one, two, 
three, and there's another one, believe it or not. Yeah, four. Oh, look, I've left my clip off. Flipping Muppet, ain't I? Oh, I'll better do that back up in a minute. It's only eight, they're only eight mil, mil volts, but there are four of them. That one is a sausage to get to. But what I did, I undid these two screws, and this flap comes, this, this duct in, comes off, and you can literally, which way did I tilt? I think I tilted it backwards out the way, and it gives you access, oh, access to that eight mil bolt there. When you do that, this lower piece comes off, and you've got access to your filter. All right, have you got that? Just rewind it if you haven't, Joey's. Okay, it's a, it, it's basically a, a circle, a four inch, five inch circle dish of plastic with vents sort of in it, and then a piece of foam on it. Now the foam is standard sponge, but it's extremely thin. Um, if you blow it out with an airline, you are going to be in trouble. I literally took one in the kitchen, put it in the sink, and I put a tiny little bit of uh, dishwasher soap, dish uh, a soap in there, uh, not not dishwasher soap, you know, like like fairy liquid, something like that. I don't know what you guys got in the states, and uh, just moved it up and down gently, and a load of black soot came out of it. Now you have to keep that clean because that duct sucks in the air through the filter, and that cools down your drive belt. Okay, so that is very very important. If that gets clogged up or it restricts the airflow in any way, your belt's going to get too hot and it's going to run out and wear out before it's due to wear out, which is apparently the lifetime of the bike, but it won't last that long, will it, if it's dirty and it gets hot. Uh, another thing I did while I, I was under here, I had a good route around, because here in the UK we have salt all over our roads. This was all rusty. So I literally sanded off and chipped off all the loose rust and I went over it with some hammerite crust, which basic, is a basic chemical reaction. You paint it on and, and it, it sort of blackens, it's sort of pinky colour, purpley colour. Paint it up, uh, on and where there's rust, it just eats into it and stops it in its tracks. Now I didn't just do there, I did all around the other side of the bike as well. Uh, everything that I could see that needed doing I literally did, as you can see. I went right around the frame. But next summer, next spring summer, I will, like I say, take all the plastics off and I will see the extent of, of the damage that I saw, saw on, that, on our roads here in the UK have caused. But fear not, the rad needs doing as well because it's literally rotten at the bottom because it's alloy. Okay, which is which is light. It's a good good con conductor convector of, of heat, good transfer of heat. But because it's alloy, alloy and salt just don't, it just dissolves here in this country. You guys in the states, you've got it good. Trust me. So that's that. I need to renew the whole of the radiator system. Um, when I'm sitting in traffic, which is never. When I sit here uh, with the bike ticking over, the fan kicks in and out, as it should, which is brilliant, so that's good. But the rad is certainly clogged at least the lower half of it, so so it's running uh, at least 50% inefficient. So there we go. Anyway, right, that's the last... That's, that's enough for this part of episode four. I'm going to go and have another brew and have something to eat. Get these um, these side skirts back on, and uh, yeah, it might take it out for a spin. I think. I think I've earned it, don't you? So yeah, yeah, that bolt, that damage shouldn't be on there. If yours is clear, it's fine. I don't know whether I think they changed it on the. Don't quote me on this. You can check with Suzuki. I think it was a 2012 bikes onwards that they changed it for that bolt the newer bolt and it made this one obsolete so please do check your bolt it, it literally takes i mean two minutes to get the panel off 30 seconds to whip the bolt out you you could have it out and back in and fair and back on within five minutes i reckon okay all right catch you later guys <clears throat> that's a win remember i said about the front being really crashy uh, i didn't mention the rear did i at that time uh the rear was rock hard too now I'm guessing 
the guy that I bought it from, he does lots of touring, perhaps with his with his spouse as well, his wife, uh, or the other girl. I'm joking. I'm just joking. Anyway, uh, I found out the reason why the rear suspension uh, shock absorber unit. So there is two, one here and one on the other side, is set on maximum. Number five there. We want it on number one. So we'll, we'll turn it. This is simple. You can do this by hand, guys. Don't be scared of your bikes. Okay, so let's just turn it around. That's four, three. See the spring coming down? Two, one. That's going to be so much softer. I'm going to ride it to work tomorrow. Yeah, five, four, three, two, one. That's going to be so much more comfortable, at least on the back. It might even have an adverse effect on the front. I can't wait to ride it now. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, it literally took me six minutes to put both um, underbelly panel-y bits left and right back on. Doddle, absolute doddle. I've had another look at that radiator, it is nasty. I have all that bag of spares to go on now. Uh, spark plugs and whatnot, brake pads, spark uh, brake caliper uh, repair kits, all that kind of wheel bearings as well. Right, yeah, and headstock bearings. So, you know what I'm like? I'm just going to take it somewhere where I'm undercover for the winter and I'm going to strip it down. I'm going to spend a whole weekend on it, I reckon, and just do the whole freaking lot all at once. Okay, right. Catch you in a bit. I need to clean this up. Look at that chuff in state of that. Okay, screw's done up. All good, everything's good, but I did find that the throttle cable was tight. And one of you guys, thank you very much, commented that it's revving a bit high. I think you're right, but I, again, the engine was fairly cold, so the choke was still on, effectively. Uh, that comes on, it's on automatically when it's, when it's cold. It's probably a wax, wax type, uh, a thermostat controlled uh, choke. Um, can't, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, choke, what am I talking about? Yeah, choke. So. It did settle down to sort of between 1100 and 1200 revs when warm and you can you would hear that noticeable drop down it was um it would be good to know won't it what it's like now now i've adjusted the throttle cable that was right out that adjuster was right down here so there was no play at all on this throttle cable there should be about two mil if you listen that's full throttle that's empty throttle that's back, that's the return. And look at the way that's twitching. I still think that can unadjust backwards. Undo that, do that up, loosens the throttle cable. I'm going to have a play with that when it's, when it's sorted. Anyway, let's go and weigh this little sausage. Come on. Okay, right, we have scales, we have bar end weight. I said they're about a kilo, they're not a kilo. They are 354 grams, which is 150 grams short of half a kilo. So that is basically, well, both of them getting on for a kilo, isn't it? So flipping Nora. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap this video up, this episode. It's only a short one, but it's just, I'm doing bits and pieces as and when I can, weather permitting, because we are here in the UK, of course, and we do get a lot of precipitation <laughs> and a lot of rain. So... Uh, there we go. Anyway, see you, see you in episode four. Right. Take it easy.